Kentucky Conference United Methodist Men and Bluegrass District United Methodist Men. We're going to be continuing reading our book, No Man Left Behind. We're in Chapter 7, An All-Inclusive Ministry to Men. If you have 100 men in your church, how big is your ministry? Sometimes our assumptions and paradigms limit us from seeing the bigger picture. This is certainly true of ministry with men. This chapter will drop kick a few of our common par paradigms and will help you understand how your church can maximize the kingdom impact of every interaction you have with every man. A church we have worked with was having an annual men's retreat. A few of the men from the leadership team has become a subcommittee, and took on the task of organizing. They set some goals. Reach out to men who traditionally, who didn't traditionally attend their church events. Help men to get to know each other on a retreat. Develop a strategy, develop a follow-up strategy that kept men involved after the retreat. They worked hard to promote the event. And 80 guys registered, including 12 who were not involved in the church and had never been on a retreat before. They had a business man speak on a very practical level about how being a Christian affects your everyday life. The talks were short and had plenty of discussion time afterwards in order to make the new man feel uncomfortable, make the new man feel comfortable, they allowed the men to sit wherever they wanted during the session and discussions. They had lots of fun and competitive activities. They offered a follow-up activity for the guys to get involved in. Small group of men who would meet every six weeks to go into deeper into the issues that were raised by the event. During the retreat, it seemed as though the guys were really getting to know each other. The discussion times were robust, the activities were fun, and a lot of laughing and joking occurred throughout the weekend. At the end of the retreat, 60 men signed up for the follow-up, and including eight of the 12 fringe men. A successful retreat or not, a week or two later, the entire men's ministry leadership team met, including the retreat planning team. The men's ministry team leader opened the meeting with a time of debrief and retreat. The retreat team was excited to talk about their success and, frankly, eager for a few pats on the back. What they heard next blew them away. Well, said one of the leaders shifting company. I guess I'll start. I have to say I was really disappointed in the retreat this year. I just felt like we wasted an opportunity. Yeah, me too. Add another leader. For instance, the leader spoke for instance the speaker hardly talked about the real the really spiritual things at all. He didn't teach from the Bible. He mostly spoke about his own experiences and the discussion times another man began. Every time we were with different guys, we should have signed guys to groups of four and stuck with those guys for the whole weekend. We could have met and prayed together and hopefully gotten some deep issues. There were other comments about the speaker. Scripture memorization, guided private devotionals, and other missed opportunities from the retreat. The planning team was stunned. They had met every goal they had set for the weekend, yet the leadership team was ripping it apart. What went wrong? The wide, deep continuum. Making disciples is all about talking about taking men who don't know Christ and help them becoming mature, passionate followers of Jesus. The journey, this journey can be represented by a continuum. Men who need Christ to mature disciples. Your ministry men will need to help men at every stage of this journey. We call this concept the wide, deep continuum.
Every man in your church can be, be placed somewhere on the continuum that determines the offerings that will appeal to them. As man matures in his face, he will move farther down the continuum. How could he, how could knowledge of this continuum have helped the leadership team from the treat examples above? First of all, the planning team could have shared their goals with the rest of the leadership team and received their support and and buying to the approach. All disappointments is a result of unmet expectations. The leadership team had one set of expectations about the target audience for the retreat, and the planning team had another. Notice that some of these suggestions that the other members of the leadership team made was bad. Teaching straight through the passage of the scripture saying, as through the scriptures, staying with the same group of men for a deeper discussion, having long and personal times with God. These are all great retreat activities to deepen men's faith. But there was nothing wrong with the type of retreat the team actually planned. It depends on where you are aiming your continuum. You will interact with men at all points along this wide, deep continuum. On the left or wide, side are men who are not all interested in spiritual things. To reach guys on the whole wide side, you need activities that reach them at the point of interest. These are activities that require little or no preparation and low commitment. Typical activities at the wide end are softball teams, barbecues, of course, you know, it has to be food, a Super Bowl party, Golf, honey, fishing, and etc. To reach men on the deep side, you need activities that meet their spiritual needs more deliberately. These activities probably have a connection from week to week. They require preparation. They'll go deeper into biblical concepts, and they will offer the account. Will offer accountability and transparency. And their focus would be more on more on more mature Christians. The big idea is build a seamless process to move men across the wide deep continuum. Typical activities might include small groups, Bible studies, leadership training, service projects, and other spiritual retreats. No activity you plan can meet the needs of every man in your church. In our illustration of the retreat above, the retreat planning team was focused on reaching guys more to the left of this continuum, while the rest of the leadership team were hoping, to, hoping for something that reaching guys on the right side of the continuum. As you plan, make sure you are offering different types of activities to reach different types of men in your church. And that's exactly what Drew Oakley did when he was up at Carrollton. And he started his men's group. He, he had not just one activity. He had many activities from very interest of the men of what they wanted because they involved their kids and stuff too. And that was a great thing. Build a seamless process to move men across the wide, deep continuum. Also, be sure your leaders are clear about your target audience. Left their own devices, left to their own devices, your leaders will naturally tailor events to their passion and calling. Help them understand the purpose of the event so they can support and support the greed upon agenda of the team. Leadership teams in continue. Different leaders will be passionate about reaching different types of men. As an example, consider the hypothetical situation at your church one Sunday morning. Your men's ministry t leadership team has just finished a prayer time before the service. An usher approaches and tells you, your team, that two men are in the lobby asking for someone to talk to them. One man has wandered in off the street. He is not sure why he is there, but he seems a little down and said that he is looking for answers. He wants to know what this Christianity thing is all about. The second man has been involved in the church for a while due to personal circumstances in his work and marriage. He really wants to take his, his relationship with Christ to the next step. 
He wants someone to talk with him about how to study the Bible and pray. Quick, you have to choose only one. Which man would you rather talk with? Some of you reading this book have reading this book have a heart for evangelism. Your desire is to reach out to the lost souls and point them towards the cross. Others are more drawn towards helping the helping Christian men build the kingdom of God. You like to help men understand what it means to study God's word and pray. When we present this scenario to men at our leadership training center, about half of the leaders want to talk to men who are seeking Christ for the first time, while the other half are drawn to talk to the man who is seeking a deeper relationship with Christ. Think back to the continuum. Men at the left side of the continuum are seekers trying to find their way to Christ. Men on the right side are leaders wanting to follow Christ more closely and serve him. Most leaders are wired to work with men at certain points on the continuum. When you grasp this concept, it can help save a lot of trouble and misunderstanding. After sharing this one during the LTC course, a pastor and men's ministry leader from his church came up and said, you may have just saved our relationship. The pastor explained that he would go out into the community and meet new men, convince them to give the church a try. But every time a new man walked in, his ministry leader would talk to them, invite them small, to join a small group and, the importance, and explain the importance of accountability. As fast as I could get new guys in the front door, the pastor said they were running out back. Understanding the continuum helped them realize that their hearts were for men at different places. The laymen learned that every man has to go through a process. They're not all, always ready for accountability and transparency. He and the pastor agreed to develop a more appropriate process to move men along the continuum. The deep wide continuum in your conveyor belt. The conveyor belt in our image includes activities and interactions right here. I'll try to get you to see the conveyor belt they're talking about right there. Let me see. Yeah, right there. See that big conveyor belt? That's what I'm talking about. It's these interactions and activities that engage men to help them move forward in the spiritual journey, but it's a fallacy to think about all these interactions to be men's only activity driven by the traditional idea of men's ministry. How many men are in your ministry? Think about your church for a moment. In the spaces below, write down the answers to these two questions. How many men in your church do you have? How many men do you have in your men's ministry? We ask this question at every training we do in Orlando. While an answer may vary, we get typical answers like 500 men, 50 men in ministry, 100 men, and 20, and 20 in men's ministry, 75 men. We really don't even have a men's ministry. Who are the men that you think of being in your men? in your men's ministry is it the guys who come to your monthly men's breakfast 12 guys who gather on wednesday mornings at 6 a.m for bible study that's early for me i ain't getting up no six o'clock the last group of men who went on a retreat would you like to consider looking at the concept differently everything your church does that touches any man in is man's ministry everything so if you have 100 men in your church the size of your men's ministry is 100. the only question is is it an effective or ineffective ministry as we said earlier your system is perfectly designed to produce the results you're getting we also said you that your church ministry with men is perfectly designed to produce the men you have sitting not not sitting in your pre not sitting in your pews. What would happen if you started thinking of your men's ministry in these terms? Every man in my church is part of the men's ministry. 
everything in our church does for and through the men is men's ministry. An all-inclusive men's ministry tries to maximize the kingdom impact of every interaction with every man, no matter the setting. Singing, singing on the praise team, parking cars, work, working with the youth, doing volunteer accounting, or sit, or sitting in the Sunday worship service. All is ministry to to and through men. The job of a leader is to determine how to help men be discipled in each of these contexts. An all-inclusive mindset solves the typical problems. An all-inclusive view of your ministry to men helps eliminate the us versus them mentality that sometimes develops between the men and the church. Any growing church has lots of men who are working it, working hard every week in faithful ministry. Many of these men are simply unable to be involved with your men's only activities. It is foolish to imply that a deacon who spent two and a half hours installing a new dishwasher for a single mom is not part of the men's ministry because he does not get up at 6 a.m. 6 30 a.m. Bible study the next morning. These are two these are exactly the kind of men we are trying to produce. They are a vital part of what God is doing through the men of our churches. The big idea is all inclusive men's ministry maximizes the kingdom impact of every interaction with every man, no matter the setting. A church David worked with during consultant week and shared one of the problems. The church was reaching lots of young fathers in the community through the family sports program. This often led to them getting involved in marriage activities and children events. Some of these men were going through a structured leadership training and began to serve in leadership positions in the church. The leaders said, we have a problem. We have these young men in our church who were reached through sports program. Now they are serving as deacons and elders and they have never come to any of our men's ministry events. David restated it for them. Okay, let's see if I had this right. You have men in your community who did not have a relationship with Christ. Your church reached them through your children's sports ministry. These men and their wives connected with other families in the church. They are grown as Christians. They are becoming these, actually serving these in your church. And the problem is... Together, they were able to see that this really wasn't a problem at all. And the only problem was that as leaders, they had stunned, stunned the view of what constitutes ministry to men. If everything in the church that does not touch men is men's ministry, then, we, then you have invested interest in helping every ministry succeed. The other ministries in the church should believe that the men and the men's ministry leadership are eager for them to fulfill the mission that God has given them. An all-inclusive men's ministry will leverage the efforts of other ministries in the church to help you achieve your purpose of discipling men. Rather than reinventing a men's only activity every time, throw your way behind some events your church has already planned that reach men. Not appropriate for us to say to men, we'll disciple you if you come to our activities or our events. Jesus didn't say come and be discipled. He said go and make disciples. God is calling us to go where our men are and disciple them there. As part of men's ministry team, as part of men's leadership team, you don't have to do all the heavy lifting. Your church is probably already doing things that are working to disciple men. Remember, every activity that reaches men is men's ministry. Take advantage of the classes, groups, and processes that are making male disciples in your church. Help leaders and men in these settings see them as opportunity to disciple men. Support other events and ministry in the church by adopting them as part of your ministry to men. 
For instance, as a men's ministry, do all the setup and breakdown of your next big church event, big outreach activity sponsored by the outreach team. Offer to recruit the male volunteers for your children's ministry summer day camp or Bible school. Rally your men around the next day sponsored by your grounds committee. Not another demand on your pasture. An all-inclusive ministry mindset leverages the work and contribution of your pasture. Think about it. If everything in your church that church, if everything in your church does that touches men is part of your men's mission, then your pasture is the tip of the spear, so to speak, of your efforts to disciple men. It will be a relief for your pasture to know that you don't have to reinvent the whole new set of programs to have men's ministry. Help them understand that your intention is for all the things your church is already doing with men to become more effective. Brainstorm with him now how to make your church more male friendly and how to support the leaders of other ministries. Getting your pastor to think about how to disciple men in your church may be the single greatest contribution. Con- contributor to the success of your ministry. Not not just your pastor benefits from all the inclusive, all inclusive men's ministry approach. Just as important, we need to inspire other leaders in the church to see every action they have with men as a disciple making opportunity. For example, just about every church has ushers. If you were to ask the head usher in your church, what is the purpose of the ushers? Why are these men and women here? He might say nice things like to serve people by making sure they know how, know what's going on and helping them find a seat or to help maintain the atmosphere of worship throughout the service as people come in and out. In the end, he his answer probably will boil down to handling all the bulletins and getting people to sit down. The quicker, the better. What if you could inspire your head usher to a new vision? Why are these men here? To become disciples of Jesus Christ. What would happen if he was able to see his role as primarily to help disciple other ushers and and only secondarily to get people seated? Here's an example that shows how you can do this. Week one, the head usher tells all of the other ushers that he would like for them to get five, get their five minutes early next week. He has something he wants to share with them. He calls them on Saturday to remind them. Week two, five minutes earlier than usual, he gathers the ushers and hands them two, all two business cards. One is blank. And the other has a Bible verse on it. He reads the verse to them and tells them why this is a meaningful verse. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, of working. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Guys, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6 shows uh, shows that everyone who serves is playing an important part. Pastor is serving God with his preaching, and we are serving the same God by helping people get bulletin and find seats. We're all important part of a person's worship experience. Put this card in your wallet and pull it, pull it out this week when you have a minute. You may want to even memorize the verse. I'd like to pray for each of you. So on the blank card, just write down your name and something you'd like for me to pray about this week. Let me say a quick prayer now, and I'll collect the cards in a minute or two. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to serve you this morning. Thank you for these men and women who are willing to give up their time to be an usher. Help us remember you as we go through life this week bless our families and bless our church for your glory amen weeks three and four he does the same thing 
but he starts to ask them if they have any thoughts about the verse and if there are any prayer requests they'd like to share with the group. Week five. This week, the head usher only gives each person the card with the Bible verse, and he goes over, and they talk for a few minutes. He asks them to write down their name and prayer request on the back of the card and trade it with each other. As time progresses, they meet a few minutes earlier to accommodate the discussions they start, that they have started happening. Different guys start praying, and the head usher misses a week and asks one of the others to do the verse that week. The other people volunteer to bring a verse. Finally, some of them are enjoying the time so much that they decide to start or join a small group. When they started, the ushers thought they were just there to hand out pieces of paper and get all the people to sit down. With a process like this, it is likely God will help them move from serving out of a sense of obligation to serving out of the overflow of their relationship with him and each other. This is a step forward in their spiritual journey, moving them down the continuum. They are becoming better disciples. Take a moment and think of everywhere men are involved in the church, in the sound booth, the praise team, or the choir, the youth programs, Sunday school classes, the nursery, as parking lot attendants. How can you inspire leaders to reach these men when they, men where they are, and help them become disciples of Christ? Every man is a part of your men, man's ministry. Finally. An all-inclusive men's ministry helps every man in the church feel like he is part of something bigger than himself. It allows each man to be involved in your church wherever he feels God is calling him to participate. If every man in your church is part of, of our men's ministry, then we must come up with the innovative and effective ways to communicate communicate the message to well every man this is why the re resonance and ex external slogan concepts come up in chapter 18 are so important for instance our church we have worked with the calls with calls their men's ministry ironmen to help every man feel part of the men's ministry they always refer to the men of the church as iron men if you go to church there, even for one week, you are an Iron Man. If you go there every week for one week, you are an Iron Man. Almost every time there is an announcement to the men, whether it's your service or elsewhere, the statement is made for every man in church, there is an Iron Man. Sounds the hokey. Perhaps, but when you look around the sanctuary, you see guys sit up a little straight, and every time it is said, Wherever men are involved, you need to claim them for your men's ministry in a way that supports and honors the other ministries of the church. Help these committed men understand that coming to an annual men's retreat or monthly men's breakfast or weekly Bible study is just not a requirement to be part of the men's ministry. The men working with the children need to see themselves as a man in ministry. Provide apron, smocks, in the infant classes with the logo of your men's ministry. This gives dual benefit. First of all, the man looks down on that logo and says, the man of this church can send me the part of that men's ministry. They think what I am doing with the kids is important ministry. I've got to small I've got the smock to prove it. Second, moms drop off the children to see the logo and say, Wow, the men of this church are willing to do whatever it takes. They even got guys working in the nursery. Help men who insist with the parking see themselves as men in ministry. Give them prayer cards each Sunday with the men's ministry logo, a scripture verse, and a prayer request for the church. Ask them to use any downtime to pray. What other areas can you think of where men are already involved? How can you engage those men in discipleship and help them feel like they are a part of the men's ministry in your church? Think about men who serve or participate in leading a boys' Sunday school class, working in the sound booth, participating in the couple's Sunday school class or small group, 
helping in the youth group, involved in the building project, singing in the choir or praise team, coaching the children's team in sports league, working with the Boy Scout troop or Awana. There is no end to the creative and unique ways you can help men feel like they are part of what God is doing to the men of your church. In the end, the message must communicate that it is not just about the program that you want men to join. Help men feel like your church values and desires that every man would learn to experience God's love and brotherhood of other men. The goal of your ministry to men is to create a system that moves men from a wide to deep, cro- deep across the continuum. We, you have in your arsenal every interaction your church has with every man. In the next chapters, we will pull these concepts together into a system that moves the conveyor belt and connects these activities so that every man in your church can become a passionate disciple of Christ. But just remember this. Here are some few points. No single activity can meet the needs of every man in your church. Where a man is in his spiritual journey will determine the kinds of offerings that appeal to him. Leaders need to agree on the target audience for a ministry or activity program. Having an all-inclusive ministry to men mindset means everything that your church does touches a man is men's ministry, everything. The size of your men's ministry is equal to the total number of men in your church plus every man you'd like to have in your church. You should leverage the efforts of the other ministries to help you achieve your purpose of discipling men. Inspire other leaders in the church to see every interaction they have with men as a disciple-making opportunity. Give men who are working in their ministries something to identify them as part of the men's ministry, even though they may be working in the nursery as an usher or in the parking lot ministry. A few little questions before we close. Where are you on your spiritual journey? Take a few minutes for each person on your team to tell his story. Second question is where, what group of men do you feel most drawn to disciple? What other men on your leadership do they seem to be drawn toward one type of man? What different type, what difference would this make in terms of your focus? terms where you focus your efforts as a leader. Third question is brainstorm some of the activities that you mean your church are involved that aren't men's ministry per se. Does your church battle an us versus them attitude with these ministry? If so, what are some of the ways you can get beyond this? Number four, list a few concrete steps in your men's ministry that can take support to the other ministries in the church. How can you help them disciple men more effectively is there an unexpected leader you could encourage with a vision for discipling men well i'm gonna go back to question where in your spiritual journey i guess i'm doing pretty good i mean i'm not perfect by all means i'm not perfect but i've been getting more involved in reading this book and you know no man left behind and trying to do more for our district man you know and trying to help disciple all you but me i've been trying to pray more every day every time i'm on facebook and i see people some of my friends need prayer i just pray right there i just type in my prayer and pray right there with them so that they know i'm actually praying with them and you know i may not be able to get be everywhere at one time you know in person to pray but you can use facebook and you can actually pray for your person right there i've been trying to pay for all my friends right there online i don't care who sees it because i know god's working through all of us one way or another so that's what i that's what i've been doing i've been trying to read my bible more and listen to listen to the bible on audio when i'm driving to and from work you know i've been trying to be more involved in church more involved with our district and i met men and of course with our conference and i met this man Question two, what group of men do you feel most feel most feel drawn to disciple? Well, just about everybody. I mean, I'm not going to say 
just not the, our conference and I met the family, our district, or our church, but everybody, the church, the ones that have been to church and know Christ, and the ones that don't know Christ, you know, you know, I'm trying to be include all men in in, in my in my um discipling, you know, and I try to lead by example, try to be that shining light for Jesus. What about the other men on your leadership team? Do they be seem to be drawn towards one type of man? You know, I'm not for sure. I I can't speak for everybody on our conference leadership team, but I but I, I will make a guess that they're like me. We want to bring everybody. We don't want to leave nobody behind. That's why we're doing this no man left behind because we don't want to leave nobody behind. Nobody. Don't matter where you are, where you're at with Christ, we want everybody to be on the same track. I mean, we know that there's going to be some farther behind, some going to be farther ahead, but you know that's why we work together as a team. Brainstorm some of the activities that your men in your church are involved in that aren't men's ministry. I don't know of any in our church because most of us men, we just don't talk about the things we do outside. We just go and do it and don't think about it. No, I don't think our church has the battle of us versus them attitude. List a few concrete steps in your men's ministry can take support of other ministries in the church. I don't know because our church is so small that we do everything. So I can't really say anything about that because I don't know. How could you help them disciple men more effectively? Well, that's another hard one because most of our men in church are older and wiser and they've they they've been more discipling us. You know, even me, you know, trying to help me be a better person just by the way they act and talk and stuff. But that's all I have for this chapter. And the next chapter we'll be reading is chapter eight, which is about the vision, a compelling reason for men to get involved. So I guess I'm going to close this in prayer again. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we was able to come and learn more about you, Lord. And Lord, just help us all as we're growing towards you. That, you know, we make our men's ministry to include everybody. And we know there's going to be some that's going to be hard to please, hard to satisfy. But, Lord, we know that, you know, we need to be diverse in what we do and have different activities for different men, different levels of Bible study and stuff, Lord, because everybody is in different place in their walk with you. And we can't expect everybody to be at the same place, Lord, because we know we all come from different paths of life. We all grow and accelerate towards you at different speeds and different levels, Lord. We thank you that you're in our lives. We thank you that you're with us every step we go. And we ask you to forgive us of our sins. We pray this in your name. Amen.